here we are. X Limited, income statement, which is like profit and loss account, for the year ended 31st of March 2010. Different ways people display this. I've decided to go for the boxed approach. As you can see, you have three columns, continuing, acquisition, and discontinued. So those are my three basic columns. Continuing, acquisitions, and discontinued. Three. CAD, if you prefer. Sales revenue, cost of sales, gross profit, distribution admin, profit on operations, profit on sale of properties. These are known as what's known as, these are known as exceptional items. Some people call them super exceptional. Large items, normal in nature, but just large in size. Then you have your finance cost. Notice the profit before interest is shown for each of the three columns, continuing acquisitions and discontinued. But the finance cost, things like interest, are shown just for the total, just in total terms, just for the whole company, I should say. And then you have your profit before tax, the tax itself, the income tax, corporation tax, and then you have your profit for the year, which is obviously after tax. So please note that items such as dividends, accumulated profits, etc., from previous years are no longer shown in the income statement, but in a separate, easy-to-follow statement of changes in equity, also known as SOSI. But that's the subject of another day. Now, I want you to imagine why we have this IAS 8. What does it do that the Companies Act doesn't? Okay. Now, the, the, incidentally, the first assumption is, uh, in drafting this example, is that the... Continuing activities started in, on the first day of the year and ended on the last day. They continued right through the year and will continue into the future. The acquisitions happened at the midpoint of the year, exactly in the middle of the year, and lasted for exactly six months till the end of the year. And, of course, they continue into the future. The discontinued by, by is, is the opposite, where you start the year with these activities, but by the end of the year, you stop them. So don't forget the acquisition is for the second six months, the discontinued is for the first six months, but both of them are for six months. Now, if a shareholder were to look at the analysis we have in front of us there, in that red box, or whatever color you want to make it, it looks like the first six months sales of activity D, or whatever it might be, produced 175,000 of sales revenue. The directors and the wisdom decided to stop that activity, and the next day, for the next six months, for an equivalent length of time, as the bit they discontinued, they start up a new activity called acquisitions. But notice the sales revenue there is only 50. Now, if you look at things at that level, it looks like the directors have made a bad mistake. They've let go of 175 sales revenue, and in exchange, they've taken on 50 of sales revenue. So during the course of this year, and the first half of the year, they had 175, they decided to close it down, and they started up something new and only got 50 out of it. So it looks like they've made, made a bad decision. But if you let your eye come down the page, you might detect that... At profit before interest level, last line at the bottom of the page, just before you come to the red box being closed, you suddenly realize, actually, the discontinued operations is 15, but in brackets. So that means it's a loss. So it's almost like the company has had expenses of 190. So its sales of 175... Because of expenses of 190, including costs of sales and so on, because of expenses of 190 when sales are 175, the losses for the six months is uh, 15, stands at 15. So actually the directors have made a good decision in closing down that division because they've avoided that loss of 15. By contrast, they had sales revenue of just 50 for the second half of the year, but on that, the profit is six. 
So if you think about that, the return, the profitability return, is 6 divided by 50 times 100, or 12%. So you can see that the middle activity, the acquisitions, is actually profitable, a 12% return, whereas the discontinued is actually loss-making. So actually you have to applaud the directors because you can see there that they have made the right decision. But wait, before the IAS came out, before IAS 8 came out, would you agree that that was not available? That kind of information was not available to the shareholders. All they would see was a 775. But now by breaking it up into continuing and acquisitions and discontinued, the shareholders, the stakeholders can see exactly how the directors have fared uh, so they understand what has happened in this particular company's case. Closing down a division has been good for this company because in exchange they've got a very profitable new activity and that's going to continue into the future. Now, I'm going to keep you on your toes, if I may. I'm going to challenge you to work with me through another part, another examination question, uh, scenario, but based on these figures. Let me just use these figures easier for you. Uh, just by the way, things like dividends and accumulated profits, you must not show on the face of your income statement anymore. That was taken away about five years ago now, so you mustn't do it. It looks bad. Now, here's my challenge to you from a past exam question. Assuming continuing and discontinued occurred exactly at the midpoint of the, of the financial year being reported on, and the chairman says next year's sales revenue will be up by 10%, show the effect of the IFRS. So roughly the kind of words the examiner used a few Decembers ago and subsequently as well. In other words, if the acquisition began at the middle point of the year and lasted for six months and into the future, of course, and the discontinued started, activity started at the start of the year and ended at the midpoint of the year, both of them being six months long, what would the... IAS8 disclosures reveal to the shareholders. In other words, what I'd like to show you is what would it have looked like before the IAS? Imagine you're a shareholder at that time. And then suddenly the international body decides to issue IAS8 and you suddenly have these columns in a red box. So what impact does the new IAS have? Not what is the definition of a discontinued activity. Uh, that's a very uh, basic question. Much more challenging is, assuming you know that, if you, I might ask you that says exam for a couple of marks, okay, but the bulk of the marks are going to be for doing some numbers. And it is those numbers that I'm going to attribute about five or six marks to. So, what shall we do? What I'd like to ask you to imagine before I launch into an answer is if you were a shareholder in the days before IAS 8 was published and the chairman said this year's sales revenue is 775 and next year's revenue is going to go up by 10%, you'd get your calculator out, you could do it in your head I suppose, and you would say something like, well, 775 plus 10%, which is 77.5, add it up, 852.5. All right, 852.5 is the expected revenue. Now that's before the days of IAS 8. What I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes is now that you have these columns, we are much better as shareholders, let's say, at predicting the future. In other words, Truly, what does the chairman mean when he or she says uh, it's going to go up by 10% next year? Is it just a 775 plus 10%? Or is it something much more detailed? And that is where the examiner will examine you. Not things like, do you know the definition of discontinued? That may be a couple of marks. But the really challenging marks is, can you do the numbers?